straight out to Penn State University graduate and noted criminal defense attorney and child advocate Brian Claypool. Uh, this is a withering 276 page condemnation of the men who ran Penn State at the time. Jerry Sandusky used Penn State sports facilities to lure kids who he then molested. What struck you ab about all of those 276 pages most? What was the bombshell for you? Jan, the bombshell for me was this litany of emails between Spanier, Schultz, and Curley where they collectively put together a plan where they were going to intentionally conceal, cover up, and not tell anybody at all about Sandusky and his propensity for abusing kids. And in my opinion, that is criminal in nature, and all three of those individuals need to be charged with conspiracy to commit child endangerment. They had an opportunity to stop this monster. They did nothing about it because they were worried about money and the revenue that that football program was bringing in for the university. Well, as you mentioned, the scathing report says this wasn't a one-time hush-hush, that these Penn State leaders allegedly communicated many times, including through emails, about what should be done about Sandusky. Listen to this. The evidence clearly shows, in our view, a active agreement to conceal and I think it would be up to a grand jury and a law enforcement officer to make uh, decisions whether it meets the elements of criminal offenses. All right, I want to go out to Sarah Ganim, who uh, won a Pulitzer Prize for her reporting on this. She's from the uh, Patriot News and an HLN contributor. Now, uh, Sarah, two of the officials, Tim Curley and Gary Schultz, are set to stand trial for allegedly failing to report Sandusky's crimes and lying to the grand jury about what they knew. But what about former Penn State president, Graham Spanier? Even though he comes up frequently, he is not charged with anything. What is the backstory there on these emails and Spanier's involvement? Well, Jane, the backstory is that these emails were not found as part of the criminal investigation. They were actually dug up by this internal investigation by former FBI Director Louis Fries team. He shared them with the criminal investigators. The criminal investigators couldn't get them, couldn't get through uh, into t in Penn State's tech, and could not get these emails out by themselves. Now, there is still an ongoing grand jury investigation at the state level. There's also a federal investigation, a uh, federal criminal investigation, as long as it goes along with a Cleary Act investigation, an NCAA investigation, there's a whole bunch of investigations still ongoing. Um, so I think that this report, even though it doesn't have direct criminal implications, could lead to or assist in other criminal investigations. Louis Free said that he had been discussing their findings with other investigative agencies, and he said he turned over those emails immediately as soon as he found them. He said that he found them to be the most important pieces of evidence in the case and immediately gave them to uh, investigators with the, grand or with, the, with the Attorney General's office. That's where the grand jury is.